right, everybody hop in here. We got we got something really important to show you. Very important. We definitely want to talk about it. Austin Reddick is back, ladies and gentlemen. Hello! <laughs> the beautiful belt. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. belt, which may or may not still be uh, his by uh, by by right. Uh, we are going to find out here. But do want to give a quick shout out. Hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Uh, for those of you joining us here, this is Total Spot Fest. I am JJ. That is Jamie. And as I said, we are returning from the depths of sickness land is one Mr. Austin Reddick. So... Uh, how are we doing here? I know we, we had to talk here, but Austin's definitely on the mend here. I think he might have got, he might have got the Rona down in Texas. Yeah, like in hindsight, that's probably what I was sick with. Because it, it, like a week later, I was like, why am I still not like just better from this? Because <laughs> I'm not like I typically don't get sick that often as it is, and it's usually pretty minor. And like I never thought of it the whole time. Then I'm looking back. I'm like, oh, that 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 was probably that COVID thing that yeah, still really, very COVID much exists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's what's that we used to avoid and stay in our houses from? Came in, Jay. Yeah. What was that? You see, what was that? What was that called? There was <laughs> yeah. There was a, a whole <laughs> pandemic about it many years ago. <laughs> it seems like an eternity ago. But yeah, that's uh, that's still a thing. But I uh, got Jamie, just see that I got him yeah. good. <laughs> Cause I know, I know what that's a reference. You know the bit, what, what's yes. the stuff we used to get in high school all the time? You know, we all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say it because, like, I want, like, we're not gonna get monetized yet. But <laughs> I just don't want to get blacklisted. <laughs> but you know what it is, if you know what it is. Yeah, but it was great to see you better. I'm glad you and the wife are both feeling better. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm staying away from that. But hell, for both of you, Jamie's got bugs running through his house left and right. You get, you, you guys bringing COVID back from Texas. Like, what is, what is going on in Total Spot Fest, guys? Jesus Christ. Well, you know what you know what has happened. What has happened? Somebody has finished their story. Somebody dethroned the greatest champion, arguably of all time, in um, WWE. Mm -hmm. um, there was a mass burial on two nights. We'll get into that. <laughs> um, let's see. What else was there? Uh, there was some f bombs, a lot of them from a very powerful person who has Under Armour shoes and like eighteen different drinks. Very um, uncomfortable in their armor shoes. Uh, I mean, they're fine now. Just took yeah. a minute. Um, and then also, like the next day was something, and then because they did it to us again, we get into that. <laughs> but then Wednesday, Wednesday. We had the raw footage of Mr. Um, Multipass himself, CM Punk, and the scapegoat, JBJP. So we had a very busy few days of the wrestling, not to mention WrestleMania weekend. Holy shit, in independent wrestling. Woo! I tip my hat to you. Wow. Alive and well, you had all sorts of wrestling. I mean, aside from like the bigger you know, TNA, you had uh, uh, ROH uh, Supercard of Honor. Big shout out to Billy Starks, by the way. I don't know what people think. Austin, what did you think of the Billy Starks uh, uh, neck injury angle to get the belt? Uh, I did not care for it. Okay. Uh, I think if it wasn't something that we've seen on AEW many times, including like two weeks ago when Jericho wrestled hook and just acted like he was shoot concussed, mm -hmm. like stop faking head injuries. <laughs> um, because we now like you have acknowledged, you have protocols in place to stop a match for a legit head injury. So you have given away the game that we would certainly stop this contest unless Sammy Guevara is in the ring. Apparently we will certainly stop this contest. If someone is concussed or has a neck injury, you have said that's a thing you're going to do. Um, so don't <laughs> pretend those because I know you're not really hurt. Uh, because you, you, you have told me what would happen if that was real. Is so it, like, stop it, doing them. If it was, if it was an, it was a knee injury spot would you, you would have been fine with it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, this, the, the basic premise still kind of stands that like we, the curtain's been pulled back enough that we know that they're shoot stopping stuff. But that being said, I love the classic. 
heel sells their knee for an eternity. The face goes to help them out of the ring and they kick the ropes into their nuts. Like yeah. some things are such classic pro wrestling, uh, but the head, the head injury one, there's just too much attention paid to a concussions and CTA and all that. This, and, and also they keep doing it. Like, yeah, it happens I, once a quarter. Personally, I enjoyed it. It was like the neck injury, not the head. So I, mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it, I didn't think it was that bad a taste. And I, 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 I love the swear from her. Um, Jamie, what was, cause you talk about independent wrestling being alive and well, I mean, we had, we had stardom, we had TJP, we had GCW going the fuck off. What, what was some of your favorites from this past weekend, uh, outside of the big big so there was some really good stuff going on um did you see the whole viva von thing and fuego del sol video and i can't think of uh D- Doris. Doris, right he's the guy yeah. who kept acting like he was like passed out in the corner yep that's pro wrestling as fine as ladies and gentlemen <laughs> like i don't care who you are that was some of the most entertaining clip of wrestling i think i've watched in a while just i was so i popped so hard for the whole thing like the best part was when he got back up and she twisted fuego around and she, he just goes like that it just falls right back in the corner i died <laughs> i literally left my body laughing so hard that by far that and of course the cluster fuck or cluster oh. beep like yeah like uh, those two were top tier entertainment but like overall it looks like everybody kind of showed out uh, over there there was um shaz mckenzie doing the splits onto some some uh light Her tubes that there. looked like that, that oh, hurt like a mother big shout out to shaz again you got a feature in uh pro wrestling illustrated right seemingly buried the hatchet with srs we'll see about that i don't i don't buy that for a second you know but shaz is great people so we're happy to see her i told this to jamie last night uh, when we were bowling austin my favorite from the weekend and i'll tell you guys on the internet by the way hello rob hello heather welcome in guys sorry um <clears throat> my favorite from this weekend was during the cluster fuck i can't remember who it was but he comes out to teenage dirt bag by uh Wiedis. And so he's about halfway through the clusterfuck. It's two in the morning, right? For those of you who don't know what it is, it's literally like what its name is. It is <laughs> it is insanity for like three hours of a single match. Maybe it's a battle royal. Maybe it's 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 crazy. Okay, <clears throat> so he comes out of teenage dirt bag. Did you see this? You know what I'm talking about, Austin. I don't think I saw this part. I saw some clips from the clusterfuck, but yeah. I didn't see all of them. I get. It. I don't remember off the top of my head. And I, I have way too many windows open here. I'm not gonna. But he comes out to a dirt bag and he takes a long route through the crowd. Okay, cool, right? And it's a GCW crowd. They're singing Teenage Dirtbag. They literally stop the match and play the entire song while everybody sings along with him as he works through this entire arena. Finally, gets in the ring, and everybody starts chanting, "Play it again! Play it again! Play it again! Play it again!" <laughs> and they do <laughs> and they play like the abridged version of, and they're singing along with it again and then he finally gets jumped after it, about okay. halfway through the second playthrough it was amazing and again like jb said wrestling at its finest guys it it, mean, it really <laughs> is like wrestling at its at its oh. best is for the people in the house oh um it's great on tv but pro wrestling at its best is for everyone that bought a ticket to be there. Yeah. And I think uh, too many indies get caught up in something they can stream and put on the internet. Oh, yeah. Uh, rather than just entertain the folks that'll show up and get more to keep showing up, which is very easy to do. GCW draws everywhere they go because you know you're going to get an entertaining show. And if on the spur of the moment, the crowd demands to sing Teenage Dirtbag, Hell yeah, let's do that. Uh, I mean, it's entertainment, man. It's the best. Two in the morning, and in the middle of the lo- of a long weekend watching wrestling, Jamie. You and I would one hundred percent be those guys blaring out "Th Dirtbag" in that crowd with it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> in a because her name is Noel. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I didn't catch uh, much of Mania weekend um, on account of I was down a lot of NyQuil over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I did like that we got a Hyper Masao death match. I saw Hyper Masao doing the skewers out there. My uh, my favorite oh, yeah. TJPW superstar. Um, so yeah, it was cool to see TJPW coming over here. And uh, yeah, Hyper Masao working an actual death match. Because she does a lot of silly ones over in Japan. And Josie's in general. I mean, yeah, TJP, they had several things. Not just the crossover show with GCW. They had several things they were doing throughout the weekend. Um, Stardom was fully ingrained in, in RH Supercard of Honor, which is fantastic. Okay, put a pin in that. We'll come back to that. Um, just very good. Very good in general uh, for female wrestling for independent wrestling effie mance warner is was a bloodbath in the greatest sense their i quit match please go find it and watch it if you have not okay <clears throat> there was another there was another show though if i remember correct this this past week we probably talk about right ja- right jamie i mean there was a little it show. was two nights so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls Before I start on our talk about the event that is known as WrestleMania, I want to put out there my thoughts about the difference between WWE and everybody else in this new Paul Levesque era. Hmm. So, Paul Levesque, Triple H, this is his first WrestleMania solo no vince no nothing and what was the first thing that they absolutely did they buried vince (laughs) buried him alive like his his corpse is still warm and they are just (laughs) burying the hell out of him and i i'm here for it like honestly that was one of my most entertaining moments of the weekend was not only did triple h bury him But then you had Stephanie McMahon, his own flesh and blood daughter, (laughs) bury him with her hair extension sticking out. But hey, what else? You know, that's just that's just the married man. Me who knows is that one. But anyway, (laughs) I will say this, gentlemen. I want your thoughts collectively before we get into WrestleMania. I think this was probably one of the best new era wrestlemanias to date i think it was a lot of fan service i think it was a lot of epic storytelling i don't think the matches were all that amazing but i think the story that they were telling was way better than the match themselves if that makes any type of sense and i think that's one thing that wwe does better than anybody period I don't think this was the best WrestleMania in the last two years. Oh, wow. (laughs) Like I thought last year's was better. And we, we, we will get to this in further detail, but if you would have taken the ending of this year's mania and done it last year, when you should have done it, it would have been an all timer of all manias. Um, and I can't hold that against last year, but I also can't extra credit this year that they got to the point too late. But like I said, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought night two was a lot better than night one. Uh, yeah, as a whole, as a whole, I, I would say like a six or seven out of 10. I could see bumping that up a bit for a few specific moments. Uh, but overall, I thought it was like, kind of what you expect of WB pay-per-views these days. Like you'll get some fun matches, uh, but like it it didn't feel like WrestleMania to me. It it didn't outside of the end, like the main event of night two had that feel to it, but I felt like Mm -hmm. the rest of the show, it just felt like a, 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 another WWE show. I kind of, I kind of came in the, I'm coming in the middle of you guys there. Um, I 100% enjoyed night two a lot more than night one. Okay. <clears throat> which is somewhat surprising considering some of the stuff that was on night one, but it didn't have WrestleMania had morphed and ballooned, especially in like the post WCW 
post you know, attitude era, PG era, right? You know, this new world, right? Had morphed into spectacle, Super Bowl, right? We made, we made the I made the comment, you know, to a few friends that you know WrestleMania is like like the Super Bowl, right? You know, even people who don't like sports watch the Super Bowl every year, right? Is that what WrestleMania is? And do you watch it for the thing? Maybe, but do you also watch it for whoever the hell is you know, nostalgic act at halftime and all the pomp and circumstance and just the, the thing, right? It didn't have as much of that as I would have hoped, right? Like, WrestleMania is always, we always said it has those entrances. And we had some of them which were okay, right? One match in particular did have that. Everything else, they were like, oh, there were some, they were, oh, they were okay, right? It, 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 it didn't feel as big as it should have been, maybe. But then again, it felt as a whole a lot better. Last year was fantastic. I like, I, I 100% agree part of that statement you said, Austin, about last year. But the last several years, it definitely felt a lot better as a total package at the end of the day. But it just didn't feel as as grand as WrestleMania maybe should be, right? You know? And maybe that's a conscious decision, you know? I don't know. But I thoroughly enjoyed the living piss out of it this year. And four or five years ago, we would not be saying that. Me and Jamie, almost we almost gave up wrestling after that one WrestleMania where it had the, the, uh, the women's three-way for the main event after six hours, and we just didn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. It so shouldn't it have been have three-way that, to begin thankfully. with. No, but, but my thing about this one specifically, I felt like they did an excellent job of finishing stories. You know, last one they left – they 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 fumbled the bag with Cody last year. I'm sorry. I I agree. Cody should have won it last year, and that would have made last year's probably the greatest one since 17, in my opinion. You know, I don't know how many can get past 17. Like for real, <laughs> that, that's, that's hard. fair. That's gonna be maybe hard. three, maybe three, but like <laughs> there aren't too many. But the, three. The, three was the birth of the winged eagle. Anyway. Three, I mean, six, I, I'm partial to six personally. Um, yeah, that, that would have been hard. Yeah, but this one, like the some of the storytelling, like Jimmy and Jay Uso's match was mid. It was not that great of a match. But the storytelling that, 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 that it told, even though the match itself was mid, was <laughs> great story. That was a great yeah. story. Yeah. And the build was good. The match was mid. Gunther... And Sammy, great build, great freaking story, even though I still think it should have been Chad Gable, and I'm still standing for Chad Gable on this whole thing, and he's going to get his day in the sun. That's why it's not a great build. That's why it's not a great build, because it should have been Chad Gable. We found out and were disappointed by the fact that it was going to be Sammy Zayn two weeks ago. This isn't something that's been building up forever. They just kind of told their match. And then they yeah, rushed an emotional storyline into it in two weeks. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's my problem with this mania and why I don't think it's as great personally to me as a lot of other okay. people thought it was. It's smoke and mirrors. They are tricking you. They are giving you a good, they're, they are polishing a turd to throw out the old, the old adage, although it's that you can't <laughs> do that. And there's, there's such a faulty structure under all of this that like if yeah, if you just tuned in for mania and watched the video packages and haven't kept up with anything, you probably felt like it was a much bigger payoff to these stories and these stories are more concise and better and not shit. In some cases they've been dragging on for multiple years that should have ended already. Uh, that was my problem with all of mania is a lot of it just seemed underwhelming now we'll get to certain yeah. points but even like yeah. jimmy and jay uso you had this big dram dramatic moment at the end where jimmy's begging jay not to super kick him y'all have super kicked each other 40 times over the last like two weeks alone yeah you're not killing the man why are you hesitating there like this has been going on for a long time y'all beating the shit out of each other plenty by now you can win a match against your brother like it's yeah. fine they're shoehorning that in. So 
and, and that's the thing with WWE. That that is that is what they do. They only expect their audience to remember the last thing that happened. And if you don't think of anything else before that, it's it could be passable to to even great sometimes. Okay. But there was so much of this that it was just mailing. They mailed it in along the way, and then they just realized, oh, it's WrestleMania. We got to come up with something. And I appreciate them at least coming up with something good in some of these cases, but it didn't feel satisfying because you didn't really care about a lot of the stories actually getting paid off. You got a, a kind of cool conclusion to them, but there was nothing that really had you invested in kind of going in. I hear you. I hear you. You know, what? one of the big <clears throat> things for me, um, and, and Jordan here, Jordan Kirby, you know, said Sammy's wife was the star. Like, I love it when they show the significant other watching the match. Like, especially when they're down and out and you see the word, like, you know, I thought that was very well done. I loved in the beginning of that whole thing, like keep the sun in the back, you know, oh, it was, I don't want to see it was beautiful. Was like, it just like, dude, came out like of nowhere. Exactly. Like, and sometimes, sometimes you get the best. AEW is really good about that right there. Like, Hey, we're going to throw this together. It's going to be some absolute banger. Well, WWE is like, well, hold my prime um you know and then they they went after it and they they did the same thing and then some of the longer builds becky and Rhea, i you know what it was an okay match it was okay it, been it wasn't, Rhea it wasn't Rhea's it best it definitely been. wasn't becky's and so fun fact megan your tyrant jj <laughs> goes she goes becky needs to do something different becky is boring nowadays and i'm like just watching it, I'm like, you are absolutely right. And I'm like, who has the gall to actually not only have a excerpt out of her, her book be read before she came out, but wear words of her book on her body? Like, I get it. You have a book. The over-the-talk stick works for Seth Rollins, and it worked for both of them. But it no longer works for more than one person in the same time. <laughs> you know? It also <clears throat> works for Seth Sorry. because you 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 can see with your eyes that Seth is one of the best pro wrestlers in the world. Yeah. Like, it works for him because of how good he is in the ring. And Becky is not bad in the ring, but Becky is not as good as Seth Rollins is in the ring, where you can basically be as over the top yeah. as you want because you're going to deliver in the ring. Becky isn't the Becky of three or four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just being – I'm not trying to be, you know, whatever, right? But – she has a child. Her life priorities have changed a little bit. Some things are different, right? You know, does that play a factor into it? Maybe. Fuck, I don't know. But it's definitely noticeable that it's not the same Becky when she was at the peak of the man, right? When that was going on, you know, th that Becky was captivating, you know? Ooh, good and now it's just okay. Well, also, Becky's, Becky's whole thing was... She was kind of like a plucky underdog. She was like the fourth of the four horsewomen and it made her <laughs> endearing. But once you reach the top, especially with something as, as like big of a gimmick as the man, like you are not just at the top, you are commenting <laughs> yourself as the absolute top. Well, now you lost, which got you there. And that's fine. Like that's an evolution of the character. But then you need to evolve from there because you're not the things people originally liked about you. And that's like I said, that's OK. You can change over time. Right. But you've got to keep evolving to get people behind you. This kind of like I was saying about the builds, not real, not really feeling satisfying. It felt like Becky Lynch was in this match because she's Becky Lynch and because they had to put her on mania. She's one of their bigger stars, which she is. Absolutely. Um, but it didn't really get you excited about it because you kind of would like to see literally anybody else. Uh, I mean, I know we, we kind of lost Raquel Gonzalez to some health issues. She would have been great. I think people Liv have been really excited story. about Liv. Liv was the, the Live Revenge yeah. Tour against Liv Rhea. Revenge Tour. That Just is the something story. new. And that's and WWE that win, is so hesitant been in to give you something new. Been better. Anyway. I think but we yeah, see... Yeah. I think we see okay. as we see Becky go anywhere, Rob. My guess to that, Rob, for those of you listening, our, our, our good buddy Rob in chat asked, we see Becky going somewhere else, maybe in one to two years, going to like do a short contract at AW. I think you see her going anywhere else. It's going to be behind a camera, either 
for WWE capacity or Hollywood. I don't I don't foresee Becky going to another wrestling company to be honest. She with hasn't she seems like a life. She expires at the end of this month. She does. Same and if, Drew if, if she doesn't resign, she might take some time away. She might come back. I don't foresee Becky going to Japan, going to AEW. I just, I don't know. I don't see it happening. I think time away would be good for her. Like, freshen her up a bit. Uh, <clears throat> don't yeah. turn into Chris Jericho. Take a year off. Oh, God. <laughs> Make, that, no, you know, like, we're 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 Baker. Perfect example is Brett Baker. Brett Baker has been gone, and guess who we've been pining for her seat? Because when she was there last, we were kind of over her just, like, yeah. phoning it in. And so now Brett we're like, Baker's man, I can't wait for Britt to come back. This is the exact you know, it's like, same. that's, this like, right now, I'm same. like, I can't wait for Alexa to come back. And even though Alexa was phoning it in before she had her baby, you know, like, <laughs> you know, before all that, she seemed like she's phoning it in, but I can't wait to see Alexa. You that's know? why they need to start just giving your talent, like, two months in a row off at some random point in the year. You could stagger it. Uh, send people away. For, you always get the big return pop, and it doesn't have to be that long. But, like, give someone a nice eight-week vacation to go re rest, recharge, heal up, and <laughs> then you're not just have them keep wrestling the same person on Raw every week because you don't have better creative ideas anyway. Like, let these people go relax a bit, fresh them up, bring them back into something interesting. Yeah, for sure. So, on that note, um, yeah, as you guys talk about know, the card. Uh, absolutely. And uh, because there is a belt at hand that we always put on for the major pay per views. We do it for all the AEW ones, but we also do it for the big four from WWE as well. So, because two nights thing, we're doing uh, a combined total of both nights with a single tiebreaker. Of course, the match, right? Cody versus. Uh, uh, Roman and shockingly very similar cards. I know who would have guessed that, right? Okay, so for a wrestling one, podcast, <laughs> yeah. First of all, Jamie and his daughter didn't look at each other's like uh test sheets, but they had the exact same card the entire time. So I'm just gonna throw that out at you literally. To a T, the exact same cards. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to know. I did not want to know what she had, so I gave her my phone because I just had her doing it on my phone. Um, because she's getting ready to play, and so I was like, "Okay, you go do your thing. I'm gonna go do this." I come back, and then she submitted it, and then I did mine like two hours later, and like no idea what either of us picked. And it's the exact same card all the way down. The only thing different was the tiebreaker time. It was the tiebreaker times, which, uh, you know, we'll see if that comes into play, okay? Now, the first night is where the variance really was going to live because uh, we all guessed the same for uh, the main event, uh, Rock and Roman versus a uh, couple white guys. Uh, we all guessed the same for the Women's World Championship match, the IC title match, the Usos match. Uh, Black Female Locker Room versus Damage Control and uh, Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Santos and Dominic Mysterio. So the only place where we had any sort of variance on the first night was the tag team, you know, mumble jumble cluster. And there's basically two answers that it was given. So you give, you know, championship A and championship B. Who do you think is going to win them, Right. Now, Austin chose DIY to win both titles. Okay, so he put DIY in there twice. Wait, did I? Absolutely. Yeah, I thought I picked Austin awesome Truth. No, you 100% <laughs> no, picked DIY, DIY twice. DIY. Son I'm of a bitch. It. I mean, like I said, I was I was on quite a bit of cough syrup over the weekend. <laughs> I mean, it happens. But did, um, I, I thought I picked our, uh, Awesome Truth to win the to win the second ones. I thought it was very interesting. I was like, he's he thinks they're gonna stick with this unified thing. Okay, yeah, cool, you, whatever. Right? Can't set a head, head heads up like, hey man, did you mean to do that? No, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna edit your answers when I'm trying to take your fucking belt. What's wrong with you, man? No, we all have the exact same form that we fill out. We all fill out the same way. This is fair, right? So be, anyway, you picked DIY twice. I picked DIY and I picked Judgment Day to retain one of them. I almost went with Awesome Truth, and I should have because Awesome Truth, of course, did win in 
and we'll talk about that match in a second. Uh, but so both Jamie and Megan picked uh, Awesome Truths and New Catch Republic, hundred percent because the word catch was in there. I am convinced of it. Okay, uh, I know it's and Pete Dunn. Pete, Pete Dunn's Dunn. back, and his name is Pete, Pete Dunn. Dunn. Yep, Pete Dunn. Nobody and picked Strong Boy. Nobody picked um, Austin Down Under or A Town, whatever the hell their stupid name is. Uh, uh, you know, Austin Theory and uh, Gra uh, Grayson Waller. Uh, who did win one of them. We were wrong on the LWO versus Escobar and Mysterio. We picked the wrong Mysterio because we all picked uh, Escobar and Mysterio. No, Dominic we, we were all right. They were wrong. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, because Carlito was, was supposed incorrect. to turn right there. Why turn. have Don, Dom lose again at Mania to his dad? Like, That's what I thought. That's what you thought. What does that do for anybody? <laughs> but it's over on Drada. Except, except for get Jason Kelsey and whichever other Philadelphia <laughs> Eagle they got. Like, I guarantee the plan was to put the heels over like you should have. And then they're like, oh, we got a shoehorn uh, local celebrity into this match, Winner which is fine, <clears throat> but still. I try to figure out which match to put Jason Kelsey in. Like, hey, this will work because we could do the mask, right? Okay, so we'll put him in the, we'll put him in the Luchador mask. Right? Okay, whatever. Uh, we all got right because uh, nobody is picking against Jay Cargo winning her first match in WWE. No, not at all. Um, the Usos, we all picked. Uh, we were all Team Yeet on that, you know, and you got, got that right. We all picked Guther. We all were convinced Guther was retaining, right? Yeah. 100%. Shame on us. Shame on I'm us. still thinking he should have won, but it's fine. That match was great. It's fine. It was uh, that's probably my favorite match of the night uh, of all the ones on night one. Okay, the main event was good too, though. I mean, you know, we all picked Rock and Roman. Rock and Roman yeah. won. I feel like it, I feel like the the first match dragged on. The first night main event dragged a little bit, where the second night didn't. Okay, it's forty five minutes. It was long. With fifteen minutes worth of freaking uh, entrances. Oh, the, the entrances were so damn long. Oh my god. I believe that was the second longest match in Mania history sure was wow sure was. and like wow. half of it was pointless there was some cool there was like yeah. some of it was good but like yeah, there's some cool shit in there <laughs> yeah well, i definitely took Why, a break in the middle of that match 100 percent. i went and got some more did, potatoes yeah like did the rock just want to prove that he had some cardio left maybe um oh, yeah. and we did all pick we all picked Rhea to retain Rhea retained so the tag team match is the only place we differed, so Jamie and Megan both got a point. Austin and I got no points. Okay, for that. I love our oh, truth I do want to say. My God. The hot tag in the middle of a six-way <laughs> ladder match. Oh, my God. That was probably the moment of, of the entire first night for oh, me was that whole so hot good. tag piece. Or, yeah. or when the ref was like, hey, hey, that ladder's broken. I don't care. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. There was definite. Yeah, the ref was doing the right thing, and the ref, and and Don, Damian Priest like, I'm going to it. Um, all right, so five five four four is the score going into night two, which is where things I would say got interesting, and by interesting I mean three of the four of us had the exact same card, and one of us, which would be me, picked one match differently. That was it. <laughs> so hey. Spoiler, we're going we're gonna to probably go to a tiebreaker here, more or less. So, actually, at this point, because I'm the only one who's different, okay? And Austin and I are both down by one. Austin's eliminated. Bullshit. He was eliminated at the opening bell of night two. Sorry, Jam. It was a NyQuil-induced error. <laughs> I definitely meant to pick Awesome Truth. And it actually kind of annoyed me after the match because I thought I had picked Awesome Truth. And as soon as it ended, I was like, I should have picked A-Town Down Under because if you're going to give the Nostalgic Baby Faces uh, title, you'll probably give some heel, the other one is some heels. Uh, I won't put it yeah, I'm, 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 I'm filing this under way. protest. Uh, protest accepted. I do. You, I do, I do you, think you have two weeks. That's the thing. We're this going up again here in a week and a half. Hey, the, uh, the, the winner... winner We'll this is Bret Hart out. losing the Intercontinental title to the Mountie <laughs> in 94 all over again. Oh, my God. That was so, yeah. So, that, the only match great. where we differed 
was LA Knight versus AJ Styles. This is a match that if Vince was still in charge, nobody would win because he's not going to let either of these motherfuckers win at, 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 at WrestleMania. So I'm thinking in my head, who are the guys that aren't going to be allowed to win at WrestleMania is going to win at WrestleMania? And I'm like, well, AJ's probably getting near to the end of his career. I'll pick AJ. I was wrong. LA Knight did win. Um, I did, I was really, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I was really wanting him to pull out the old school TNA entrance, man. Get ready to fly with the sparks. Not nah, evil ways though. Um, Bobby Lashley street so profits won the Philadelphia street fight with Snoop Dogg oh, as one on, of the best hold commentators. Hold on. You lost. What does that mean? What does that mean? You two were eliminated. What does that mean? Okay. So, so we're not. Obviously, that means that it's going to be either Jamie or Megan is going to be the winner. Okay. W.O. back on top. Also, I just want to say really quick that nobody won that street fight between the Street Profits and uh, <laughs> the Carrying Crosses because woof. Yeah. I that disagree. should have been on SmackDown. I disagree. Scarlet absolutely 100%. won that. Okay. And if if I sound like a horny single man, yes. I am. And I know she's married. I have no shot. I don't care. She was beautiful. It was fantastic. And Montez Ford did the ricochet. I feel like uh, you're better as a blind now. Montez Ford did do the ricochet Dragon's Gate leaping tadpole over the, the, the corner uh, spot, which was – that was cool. Okay. Yeah, there was there was a, a cool spot. <laughs> Snoop Dogg won, yes. There was a cool spot. <laughs> Snoop Dogg yeah. was great. I enjoyed Snoop Dogg <laughs> on commentary very much. Uh triple threat, Logan Dogg, Paul. Yeah. We all picked Logan Paul. Logan Paul won as we knew it would. That was actually that was a solid match, not gonna lie. And it hates the I still hate to this date that Logan Paul is such a good wrestler as he is, because he is actually a f- very good wrestler, and that just drives me insane. It was a solid match, but it was it was another one like, why are we really here? Uh, Because they had to put Randy Orton and Kevin Owens on the mania card, as you should. Um, But yeah, that's why we all picked Logan Paul, because like, why wouldn't he win that match? A third of the buys from this were for people who watch wrestling once a year. Yeah, that's that's the thing, you know? Yeah, it was a fun match. And the uh, Kevin Owens on the golf cart. (laughs) <laughs> right and Randy Orton down in the ring was great, but yeah, oh, like dude. it didn't have that that big mania payoff feel. It was just a match. It was just a match. A good one, uh, but a match. My favorite, the, my favorite was Randy was like slow down, like, <laughs> he was like slow down. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the big payoff feel was the women's title match though. So Bailey versus Eo Sky. We all picked Bailey to you know do her story. Um, I really would like to have seen. There's no Poppy, and of course the you know Paramore didn't happen for Bailey, so she came in as some sort of Egyptian goddess. And then I love how Corey Gray's trying to sell the story about how there's an Egyptian park in, in San Francisco. And that's why she, and it's like, dude, she just, it just looks cool. Just shut up. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just go. You don't need an explanation. If it's cool. Like he literally yeah, kept but... going back to it. And Pat is just like, yeah, yeah, sure. Whatever. Right. I don't care. <laughs> it's like me. I did not care. Right. Honestly, I was kind of hoping during this fight, like something would happen, like her hair got in her face or whatever, and she busts out like a ponytail and put it off to the side a little bit, like old school <laughs> Bailey, and get Perfect, the win. You know. Like I've been like that, have been so sick. Like yep. yeah, like all, all the fans were like she's insane. <laughs> you know, we, we did get the because it's a Philly crowd, even though there is you know half the people there were crowd from all over the world. It was a Philly crowd still, so we got the the return of the Hey Bailey chant. You know. Um, very good, Bailey won. Drew McIntyre uh, did defeat Seth for the for the title, and then immediately got goaded by Punk into getting beat up by by CM Punk. Who okay, um, but then it did bring in the always satisfying instant cash in from Damian Priest to be your new World Heavyweight Champion. And Drew did also defeat himself. Yes. Yes. And I don't know why he was crawling on the table like that. But Heather asked earlier why he was crawling across yeah. the table so sexual. I, you know, though, like, we were watching that match, and he grabbed that phone, and you saw him do whatever. I'm like, okay. And then Megan happened to have Twitter up, and it said, bored at work. Right? He tweeted that <laughs> in the match. I'm like, that is 
fucking awesome. Like <laughs> instantly, he is like, I mean, he won the Slammy for being the best social media um, wrestler or whatever. But that was like that is hilarious. Yeah, and I love Drew McIntyre even more. And naturally, we all picked Cody Rhodes. We've already talked a lot about the Cody story. I will say this. Because I saw a meme on Twitter, which I'm now buying into 1,000%, justifying why it was this year and not last year. WrestleMania two years ago was a new hope. Here comes a guy the day after WrestleMania to take it down. Last year, so- Solo Sika comes out, and he is the Empire striking back. And this was the return of the Jedi. It's not the Avengers. It's goddamn Star Wars. And I'll buy into that any day of the week. So uh, you're you're half right. It is Star Wars, but it's not four, five, six. It's seven, eight, so nine. You're seven, eight, nine on this year. <laughs> because they had absolutely no intention of getting to this point. As of like the Royal Rumble, it was just going to be Rock and Roman this year, and Cody yeah. was not going to finish the story. They this was not some grand design plan. This was not. No, I, I, I it I, only I, could have been this good if it was done this year. This was them botching it last year, not concluding the story at the logical point, and also ending Roman's reign at the logical point. An entire year of nothing particularly meaningful involving that title until about the rumble and the build up to mania. It was them wasting about 10 and a half months of everyone's time. Still at least giving you something cool at the end, which was better than just nothing cool. Uh, but no, this was, this was not the, the good three star Wars movies. This was the second worst three because they're still not as bad as one, two, and three for being <laughs> honest. That's a whole other discussion now. Reach. Pre- uh, there isn't no no no. There's only two three. One does not exist. I am sorry. Other than it gives me Darth Maul. One oh, was god awful. I, I would take one over two any day of the week. I mean the shitty literally it, 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 in uh, in my esteemed opinion, Attack of the Clones <laughs> is the literal worst movie of all time. Like if someone asked me What's the worst movie oh, you've ever wow. seen? It's Attack of the Clowns. So I'm, I'm with Jamie Ooh. on this. One, one is the bottom, bottom, bottom of the barrel. One, you got some cool lightsaber fights. You got pod racing, which was dope. Um, it's kind of goofy looking back, but at the time, that was super cool. Pod uh, racing game on the N64 was amazing. Two, pod racer pod game racing. was dope. Uh, no, uh, Attack fun. of the Clones, <laughs> you get... You get the dumbest love story and romance in the history of movies where zero sense. This this dude that she she met as a child like a decade ago is like, hey, I love you. She's like, you're really creepy. Then he floats a piece of fruit at her and she's like, oh, shit, let's get married. That's episode (laughs) two in a nutshell. It's terrible. You did get Carol Dooku with arguably the coolest (sighs) saber out there. But, you know, aside from Darth Revan's saber. But yeah, Darth like, Maul's double bladed is... saber is way cooler than Dooku's umbrella handle. I'll do no way. Yeah, the double bladed saber is rad. It, it's Asajj, twice as cool Asajj as the regular lightsaber. Way better, but I digress. Asajj's is amazing. We're we're sticking to movies. <laughs> we're not going to the extended <laughs> right, universe. For, for what it's worth, I'm a total Plus. canon boy. Okay, I'm a total Star Wars canon boy. I am not one of those that I stay right, in my we've life. Lost I all like our viewers. Right all right. So, we're, so hey, stay tuned for uh, um, the Total Star oh, Yeah, there's some rusting happening, too. Gonna, yeah. Um, so, came down to it. So, final scores were, like I, like I made mention of, uh, I had nine. Uh, Austin had ten. Remember that. Uh, and both Faulkners had eleven. Now, the tiebreaker was the total time for the, uh, the Cody versus a Roman match. Here's the part where Austin really hates NyQuil. And because the time of the match was 33 minutes and 23 seconds. Austin was the closest to that time. He was 58 seconds off of that time. Under a minute away, yeah. I'm, I am filthy with these match times. Because I think Running I was like, what, a minute off it. If he didn't, if he wasn't so goddamn high off of the big Q and clicked the right button, but he was not, unfortunately, 
It is what it is. Megan had 21 minutes, 33 seconds. Jamie had 27, 43. Jamie is the closer. Jamie is your new champion. Your reign sits on a throne of lies. I'm going to refuse to mail the belt and just declare <laughs> myself the rightful champion like Shawn Michaels did with the IC title after he got concussed by a bunch of Marines. That's what I'm going to do. Well, we do, have another, we do have another one of these in a week and a half, so it's probably good because that way it just, you know, by the time you mail it, it might be mailed back to you. Who knows, right? You know, so. <laughs> Acknowledge me. Can't that do it. it to you, Austin. And dude, you got to earn it at Destiny. Oh, okay. it. all right. I'm, the I'm declaring back, the title baby. vacant. The champ's you... back. It's all that matters. <laughs> it's mine. Well. I'm the reigning, defending, undisputed. Your your win was the equivalent of Damian Priest cashing in money in the bank. I was compromised, and you got a cheap <laughs> victory. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna get I you lie, in return. I, cheat, I steal. I lie. I cheat. I steal. Well, again, this belt's going to be on the line again in Two weeks, 11 I will days. defend it proudly. <laughs> so, overall, I had a good time. I thought night two was a lot better, like I said, than night one. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed night two, though. Even though some of it was predictable, some of the storytelling was a little bit off, like you said. I wanted the grand entrance. I thought the matches were a lot better on night two than night one. And yeah. it was a good time. And it wasn't... It wasn't the flop that WrestleMania had been two years or more ago, right? Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I thought it was a solid like six, maybe seven out of ten. It was it was good enough for certain. Um, night two, yeah, the matches were a lot better except for that terrible street fight, which... <laughs> You gotta give you, somebody. You, you gotta give him a chance to go to run to the bathroom at some point in the show, dude. You're, you you bring Bubba Ray Dudley out to be the referee, okay? Uh, why couldn't we have gotten like Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain, or even Lashley and the Street Profits against three ECW legends in a ten minute WWE Hardcore Street fight? You go all the way with the fan service on this because no one gives a shit about this match in the first place. And I'm all for Lashley and the Street Profits getting Mania Payday. I, I think all of them are phenomenal performers. Um, but like I said, this this could have been on SmackDown. This was pointless, and it also was not good. Uh, just this was the perfect spot to bring back some ECW legends and have a fun little couple hardcore spots. Take it home, baby faces over, and they they just they big miss on this one. I agree. Couldn't, yeah, couldn't agree more. Well, well, the next night was the Raw after WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Always touted as the best Raw of the year, right? And they suckered two of us into watching it. Full three hours, too. I didn't even do the wait till Tuesday and watch the abridged on Hulu, which I wish I would have. <laughs> uh, no, I had it open. I was watching like Twitch and I was doing some other stuff. I was working on some things and I had it open in another uh, the whole time. I kept what, and I, I decided after mania, because that's the other thing about mania is it really didn't do much to sell me on the new era. Mm -hmm. It, it did enough to get me to tune in Monday night and let's see where this goes. And I only had the faintest sliver of optimism <laughs> that we, it would be worth the three hours of my time. It was certainly not. Uh, the first hour of raw was commercial free. And it was also 40 minutes of the rock slowly 46. talking. It was 46 minutes from the start of Raw until we got something that wasn't The Rock and Cody Rhodes. Yeah. And half of that 46 minutes was Cody Rhodes standing around like a dipshit doing nothing while they either played a video or someone else talked. <laughs> and, then, um, and then when someone else talked, it was The Rock talking as, as slow as humanly possible. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And then oh handing him a mysterious God. trinket. So, yeah. like, you spent the first 46 minutes of. The new era, which you told us again for the third night in the row. This is a new era. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It is the same era. <laughs> you were just calling it something different. You literally changed nothing, and you wasted three hours of my Monday night. When it, it was close to being good. Like, they just can't help themselves. 
you had 46 minutes to set up a potential future match with no actual date or confirmation between the rock and Cody Rhodes. Okay. How about you spend that time to set up the next challenger to the belt? He just won last night. Tell us what's next. Get us excited. Right. Nope. We get the rock talking very slowly yeah. for half an hour or so handing Cody a mysterious trinket and then saying, I'll be back at some point in time. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Gunter, no AJ, no, nobody. It's just like, who gives a shit? And then you, like half the night was him selling the draft in three weeks, telling yeah. you that whatever in you're Kansas watching City. doesn't matter. Do what? It's going to be in Kansas city. Oh, kick ass. But selling the whole idea of that, you know, in three weeks, none of, the, none of this matters because in three weeks we're going to shuffle up everything anyway. Yeah. yeah but, and then both NXT champions come on and win basically squash matches against opponents that they probably shouldn't have been squashing. And yeah, cool. the only like actual match they really set up for the future, obviously made before the main event, main event was a number one contenders match. But up until the main event, the only future match they had set up was Roxy and Natalia the next night on NXT. Uh, yeah. The most annoying part about all this is right after Rock and Cody Rhodes, we get Dragunov and Nakamura for five minutes. Exactly. If you take 10 minutes out of Cody and The Rock and give us 15 minutes of two very good pro wrestlers pro wrestling, you're right on track for a good show. Then you roll into... Our truth obviously telegraphing scene is going to be their third partner. <laughs> but then you do 95% of the match and have Cena do the run. And let, you told us he was cut. We know he's coming at some point. He can't stand on the apron of a six man for the whole time. Like you can't just get us excited for the whole match and not just send him out there <laughs> to the last spot. They can't help themselves. Right. They do. They do the obligatory Jade Cargill match that they said they weren't going to do when they brought her over because it was literally what they did and to kind of get her over in AEW. Yeah, they buried... Hold on. They buried another company for doing that and then they turn around and do it. Hmm. Which it's a good use of Jade. Oh. Jade looked good in that. Yeah. Um, my question what? is, I was told Jade Cargill was signed to SmackDown and exclusive to SmackDown. So did I. No, this matters. Again, Which, there's, it, there's a draft happening anyway. Who cares? Who if cares you're going to tell us that, like, hey, Raw after Mania, like, everyone's in town, anything uh -huh. can happen, that's cool. But then don't put Ricochet <laughs> and Bronson Reed in your four-way for the title match. Maybe give us an L.A. Knight or give us someone. Give me Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Like, give me some people that might legitimately challenge for that title because it ain't going to be Ricochet or Bronson Reed. It's not going to be the guys competing on WWE Speed <laughs> Wednesdays on Twitter for three-minute matches. You're not winning your title. So give me someone else. So that was the joy of WrestleMania after after Raw for this year. So we'll Thank see God for our truth. Is all Thank I God for our truth. Oh, dude, that was the best part of the whole night. It was... He's so good. And I like Miz with him. I, I yeah. like Miz in his role these days. Like Miz is a supporting role is fine. He's Miz is doing what Jericho player. should be doing in AEW. Hey. Having fun and not yeah. stealing spotlights from younger uh, oh. talent. Yeah. Well, oh, do we have to, uh, we have to talk about it? We got to, to turn the page to talk about it because you know. Thank you guys. I said uh, WrestleMania is a special is, is that is that event. So I know we we primarily focus on Dynamite, and usually that's what we get to. So um, thank you for letting us kind of go all through that because it is that's that is it is the end of sign pointing season. So let's 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 turn the page and let's go to Dynamite. Absolutely, but before we do, I'd like to give you guys an update on the poll that was created about if they like if they are for or against fake head injuries. So, we've had actually quite a few votes tonight, and 44% are saying that they like it, 33% are opposed to it, and 22% don't really care either way. Interesting. Yeah, we'll leave that up for a little bit longer, and we might get a new one here in a little bit, I assume. It might be something around Chris Jericho. Um, <laughs> even though, actually, you know what? No. He doesn't even deserve a poll. No. 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 Don't encourage him. Please. Do not encourage him. <laughs> Do not feed the gremlins. So, 
So AEW opens up with the World Championship Eliminator match. Or does it? Tonight, I'm not going to lie. Tonight was an odd dynamite in my books. Yeah. That's being generous. That, that was being very being generous. generous. Yes. I mean, that, arguably the best match of the night was Anna J versus. Uh, uh, I'm not even going to argue not, that. I did not leave tonight being as annoyed that I wasted my time watching it. Like it, I, it was, it was mid at best, probably not good um, as a whole. Uh, but I was not as like physically angered as I was after wasting three hours of raw. <laughs> so I can say that about tonight's dynamite. Um, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be fair. Even though I do prefer AEW, this was not it as a show. I mean, even you know, for the even for the like the the build up for it, it just nothing really excited me for the night. It's just like the, you know, it's like this is your post. I know it's not your pay per view, but post WrestleMania, you're two weeks out from your pay per view. You should be having this should be a big fucking deal, right? Didn't feel like yeah, it at I, all. I I mean, you know, they opened up with. You know, Samoa Joe getting absolutely just, like, brutalized by Strickland. I thought that was nice. I honestly kind of liked, uh, ooh, this this could end up being something great. And, like, Dustin Rhodes could maybe sneak something out. And maybe he finishes his story, you know? Like, hey, let's let's <laughs> give, you know, Dustin a, guess, Dustin a chance. And obviously, it's not what happened. Um, because, man, did did he bleed in in the in the main event like i'm i'm, I mean, I'm saying with those two together like we're just gonna ch -ch -ch yeah main let's event. get out of the way yeah so you know like samoa joe had a promo during there like you know somebody's gonna pay the blood price i thought that was absolutely vintage joe um but yeah so Matt, okay. you never was, there was no doubt what was gonna happen right for the second it was booked it was like well he's not winning that there's zero surprises tonight for me. And they were they were very close to having something that would have gotten you engaged right off the bat. Uh, have Swerve come out and beat the shit out of Joe. Have Joe still go to the ring. And have Dustin beat him because it's a title eliminator, yeah. not a title match. And then give Dustin his shot, the dynamite after Dynasty. Right. Joe and can eat a loss you, after you, getting savagely beaten by Swerve. Right. He doesn't lose anything. And, you can, and it and gives you, you a nice little story right after your pay-per-view. And he and he can give you a new champion, because we all assume it's going to be Swerve more than likely, right? He can give you a new champion a good, you know, kind of first yeah. match, right? You know, because that's what Just Dustin does, right? Can you cash in He's on the Cody winning thing? Like, it's okay to kind of acknowledge that and play off it a little bit. He's not winning the title, but he's getting a big win. Uh, it, it's kind of a fun way to play off that. And, yeah, it just sets you up for the, the week right after your dynasty. And you get surprised by something right off the bat on AEW. Now you're more interested in the rest of the show, which also was underwhelming. I did like seeing Dustin in the main, though. Like, it was good that he got a main event. Well, it was I just cool. Wish a little bit more with him. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, and honestly... The 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 real opening match of Adam Copeland versus Penta Smurf, um, <laughs> you know i I thought that was actually a very enjoyable match. You know, both of those guys Absolutely. can go. Yeah. You know, Pen Penta Smurf. I really really enjoyed what he was doing, and then Cope actually doing a little bit of lucha libre there for a hot minute. How about <laughs> that, guys? Yeah. It was I, fun. It was a good match. I mean, is that's that's what I expected, you know, to have from that match. But again, is nothing was in doubt, you know. So, which is it was a good big, match. Big I wish I would have opened with it, like truly opened with it. Yeah, I think if you open the show with that, because I think the thing that hurt this match was the crowd wasn't like super into the Swerve and Joe stuff. Because they like both those guys. And so you're not like getting a bunch of heat or a bunch of shine really either way. It was like, oh, I guess we're not having this match. Uh, and it just kind of took the wind out of the sails out of the crowd a little bit, where I think if you would have opened with Penta and Copeland, they'd have been way more into it. But yeah, it was cool seeing him out there doing some lucha shit with Penta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I I agree. I think <clears throat> if this was a cold cold open, like first you know first open, I agree. And then maybe have a backstage segment where Strickland attacks Joe right after the match, something of that nature. That yeah. would have been really cool. But yeah, no, I agree with you. I think this one should have been your actual opener. Um, Especially because it was the only wrestling in the first hour of the show. Yeah. And then what do you guys think about Brody uh, uh, Brody King attacking him uh, to kind of set up those two probably destiny for the TNT? No, this is... No, they've already announced destiny to trios. Yeah, trios, sorry. Yeah, six-man tag. Yeah. Sorry, words. Yeah. Like... The match's already booked. I don't care. Yeah. Sorry, I just and you, I love the House of Black. I don't I'm, care. I'm into the match. I'm looking forward to the match, but like yeah, this just, just kind of seemed like filler, <laughs> right? <clears throat> I mean, you know, although we did get we did get Stokely in the back. Oh right. and that was the most Stokely. awkward and best interview of the night. Honestly, that Stokely was... pitching Willow versus Copeland for the TNT title, like right as soon as they started. Was and then him him interacting with Kingston too. Was, yeah, uh, he's yeah, the yeah, treasure. Yeah. The chicken hawks. I don't know. I just making that up. And he had no idea. He was just one hundred percent flying off the cuff. Then Willow suggests the mask, and then Copeland suggests the exact same match. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. "Boy, this went off the rails fast." And I go, I'll, "Good, yeah." I, like I did appreciate it. him just kind of laughing about it and then making that note. Like yeah. it was it was fine, but yeah, it's just kind of filler because we already know what the matches are and like we're looking forward to them. But yeah. So I like that fourth wall break, yeah. you know, that, 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 that's why I like that part. But you just, you just said promo after promo after promo after promo until you got to the video, Jamie. Yeah. So also before we get any further, I do want to call out, I'm stupid excited for Mark Briscoe being the new ring of honor heavyweight champion Yeah. Yes. Uh, on the anniversary of when his brother won it. I think that's really effing cool. Um, and honestly, like the videos of everything of, of, um eddie and him in the back and i guess this was eddie's thing eddie fought for this Absolutely. eddie fought to put over mark Absolutely. And i was like dude that, that's, that's, that's eddie. how much of a class act he is that's fucking that's eddie for you jesus christ we need more eddies in this world yes we do Just tell it like it is and aren't afraid to put over somebody because it's the right thing to do do we need more cm punk on our tv is the question uh absolutely not so right. speaking of what wasn't it, just like uh, like uh, uh, Austin eloquently said, this ain't it. Yeah. I actually didn't mind this. Uh, uh, I think if you if you kind of look at the whole situation, AEW wasn't like bringing this kind of stuff up. Punk did an interview, and Punk decided to go into detail. So now the attention is on AEW regarding this situation, and it's it's being talked about again. There is nothing more pro wrestling than capitalizing when you can. Uh, so I think just saying you're going to air the footage, people start talking about it. People are interested. Uh, I think if you just do nothing about it, you're just kind of missing an opportunity to, to draw some eyes to your show. Okay. I wish they would have surrounded that <clears throat> with a much better show. Um, cause not, but two weeks ago we were getting Osprey and bangers every week. Like if you would have followed this with Osprey versus Takeshita or opened with an Osprey versus Takeshita and then gone right into this, you're probably bringing in a lot more new eyes. Um, but I don't mind them saying they're going to release the village footage. There is not many wrestling fans that if they just ask like, Hey, do you want to see the tape? Who's going to say no? We all want to see that. That's like true. That's true. We, we're interested. So you're giving people something they do want to see. You have it presented by your heels. Uh, you're only heels on the show that would have the authority to really show something like this. And they made it about them. And then you got a cool FTR babyface promo afterwards. It wasn't great. It wasn't something that was really going to draw any more new eyes into AEW. But I think you had to show it anyway, or you were just kind of missing on an opportunity to do something to get some attention. And it could have been a lot worse than what it was. And for, for what it's worth, Heather, Heather was saying basically my exact things, right? You know, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's easy. Go find it. It's on Twitter. Um, 
is. You know, he's begin the area and got glass picked out of his back. There's like 20 people sitting around Gorilla talking and hanging out. All the refs are there. Joe's there, right? And here comes Punk up to him. Punk approaches him, confronts him. They start talking, literally in front of Tony and in, in the middle of like all these people, right? If it was as contagious as he said it was, there would have been people, hey, 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 right? There wasn't any of that. Nobody was paying two shits to them, right? And then they're talking back, they're going back and forth. Doesn't look like, you know, Punk's getting a little heated, but Jack's just sitting there kind of talking to him. He, boom, goes after Jack. Hits him again, puts him in chokeholds when everybody gets involved. Then he, he goes after Tony, who's behind Gorilla, and that's it. Okay. About, honestly, what I expected. What what I expected, you know, because I didn't believe Punk's side of the story for a second. And did they need to show it? No. Is it cool that they did show it? It doesn't really bother me. I don't really care, right? <clears throat> they weren't going to show it if Punk's story was 100% accurate. We all know that. Okay. There's a brand new poll up, and no, it's not about Chris Jericho. So please, um, after you hit that like and subscribe button, make sure you go ahead and get in there and uh, answer that poll for all of us. Really appreciate you. So yeah, honestly, and- I don't. You know, I liked FTR's version of it because they, they. I mean, like you said, they 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 used it to sell the story of the you know the FTR bucks. Like you need to sell that story. There's my problem with the entire night. But I Get did like. Time. I did like, yeah, I did like the, the, the kind of the, just the verbiage from them FTR gave the basic thing that we've been saying since for months now, let's just move the fuck on. Let's move on. Who cares? Okay. Let's put yeah. I appreciate that. Acknowledging that on air, like yeah. you have characters on the show that are the voice of most of your audience. Like, Hey, this is, this shit's kind of silly and petty, but that being said, People are really entertained by silly and petty shit. They are. And that's why we all watched because we wanted to see that footage. I know. We're going to like the, the funniest part to me about uh, all of this was the, the, the fake pearl clutching on the internet of this just makes AEW look bad. Their entire show is about someone that's not even on the roster. No one gives, no one really gives a shit. No one that's an AEW fan is going to stop watching because of this. No one that's a diehard CM Punk fan is going to start watching AEW because they like <laughs> it's not going to affect anything. It's just to get people talking about it, which they did. No, I which agree. Is, it's I, always the rub. At the end of the day, yeah. it doesn't change anything. Yeah. Ultimately, I, I appreciate that they showed that footage because I was curious. They said yeah. they had it and they would show it. Hell yeah, cool. Like, Ultimately, it gave people something they were interested in. The footage itself was underwhelming, but they can't really control that. Um, I figured it's gonna be Jamie. You were gonna say, but if oh, go ahead, Jamie. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I, I think Heather hit the nail right on the head. I think they, the only reason that this got brought up was because Punk lied about the whole incident on the MMA hour, and and know that definitely rubbed Tony the wrong way. I think was it good? Yes, but. I still think it wasn't it because of how they used it. I think they misused it. They could have done it in a completely different way, I think. Um, you know, honestly, just to bury, bury Punk as a liar, you know, they could have just went that route that would have pissed off FTR, and they could have went that way instead of, you know, hey, let's just move on. Like, I, I don't know. I just didn't. I thought they could have done a better job with That's how fair. they presented it. That's I, just, fair. I, I would like to, to see the Bucks like use that as a reason why they're going to be even more strict with the fines of the backstage, like play into that a little bit more. Um, add add a little more comedy to it. it. The one down, like the one weird thing was that it, there was no audio. Like obviously you're not going to have audio of that happening, but I would have liked the Bucks narrating over it. Like <laughs> go all in on the entertainment if you're going to show it. But yeah, they could have yeah. done it better. Or they could have been playing the voices. Like a really bad voice for Nick Like a really bad falsetto voice for Punk, you know, they could do. Yeah. They could do that would have been hilarious. I really like chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice bad, cream. A bad weak. lip reading for footage of CM Punk attacking Jack Barry. That would be great. Yeah. Really now, Will Ospreay buried... Like <clears throat> Will Ospreay did the correct job in uh, how to shoot at the... The other side of the wrestling fence, though. Yeah, this is the third salvo, right? 
This yep. one's AJ, interesting. Yeah, JJ, go with it. I, I love this. So here's the thing. So I th- I don't think I don't know if he was talking specifically. This is Triple H we're talking about. During WrestleMania weekend, one of his hundred different press conferences he had, right? He was they they were talking about somehow got brought up, you know, about schedule and why some people are choosing AEW versus hint versus WWE, right? Because they definitely wanted Will Ospreay and a few others, right? That went to AEW, right? And hey, Oh, that's going to happen, right? Free agency, some people go to other teams, right? You know, even though you you want to see them on your team, they don't go to your team, right? Um, <clears throat> sometimes you fleece the Bears because why not? Um, <laughs> or you sign Russell Wilson. For yeah. pennies. Literal no yeah. risk. No yeah, there is no, no, no downside to them paying Russell guy Wilson. Wilson. So guys won a Super Bowl and been to nine Pro Bowls. You want you, you think he's worse than Kenny Pickett was for us? They're paying okay. him the vet minimum. Yes, Joe Flacco. He's Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco costs more money. This guy literally, we can try it out, and if it works, great, great. We got we got the guy to fall back on. That's a better long term option than Russell Wilson is. I think I think the other guy's way better, but I would never pay that guy one cent. I think. He is a cancer. He is CM Punk. Wow. Okay. Well, I don't have that hatred for Russell. I never. I I don't think <laughs> what happened in Denver was Russell Wilson's fault. That organization no, that, that, is that was Sean Payton's fault. Let's be honest. Rough. All right. Yeah. Regardless. Regardless. Same thing, right? People go different places. It happens, right? It happens no matter what, right? But he was asking about it, and he made mention. That if you want to make it in the big leagues, a WWE, right? You gotta put the work in. You got you gotta commit to the grind. You want you want to do half the work and you know have all this time off a lighter schedule. Fantastic. Maybe the big leagues isn't for you. Is basically what he was said, more or less, right? Um, I'm misquoting it a little bit. I know, but that's basically what he said. So here comes Will. Yeah. Yeah, here comes Will Ospreay for his promo, right? And they do the the reverse, you know, face you with the back to the crowd on the on the stage, which I, I actually now I've seen it a couple weeks. I don't know if I like it. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was cool last week. It was different. I don't know if I actually like it. It's a little weird. I I would just like to see it mixed in, like just switch it up. Just don't yeah. do the same thing every Let's time. Not be predictable. Yeah. But regardless, yeah. so so. Renee, don't be Kevin Dunn. <laughs> Renee's interviewing him, and he, he's he starts with this talking about shooting on that because apparently, you know, I am you know king of the grind or you know you know this and that from a guy who travels every week eight hours both ways on a plane from England to America. It's like you know I know this as opposed to somebody who got his job by grinding on the boss's daughter. <laughs> okay. It's like God bless you, Will Osprey. You know, and he just he, so he had five minutes. He did, and he did a fantastic little promo. There's nothing that needs to sell us anymore on Osprey versus Danielson, but having him on our TV is smart for Tony to do every single week, even if you're not going to put him in a banger match every week like Austin wants to see. I mean, the people want to see. Austin yeah. speaks for the people. I've always that's I've always right. Said. Yeah. I'm going to get my own belt made and call myself the people's champion. And then me and Jamie can do a weird thing where we ask each other to hold our belts for a minute or two. And then I'll hand him a secret trinket and say, I'll see him when I come back. That was raw if you missed everybody. That was the first hour of Monday Night Raw this week. Uh, it's not even a joke. It wasn't we're going to do, do, do that. We're going to do that May 10th at uh, uh, the next uh, Fountain City Pro show. By the uh, way, tickets on sale now, fountaincitypro.com. If you have not already and you're in the Kansas City area, get your tickets for Fountain City uh, Pro's next show, Bombs Over Ball. Yeah, I really appreciated Osprey calling that out. And it's kind of interesting because Osprey was a guy they really wanted. And Osprey's a guy they would presumably want when he becomes a free agent again if he becomes a free agent again yeah. like he's still a younger dude um the entire attitude of well they just don't want to do the work and put in the grind to make it here in the big leagues like yeah more people watch raw um wwe's probably not going to pay osprey more than AEW did though 
So he's making big league money for sure wherever he went. Also, you say he doesn't want to work and do the grind. He's willing to go out there and have a 20 to 25 minute dope ass match where he takes a bunch of awesome bumps every week if Tony Khan would let him. Uh, that seems like more of a grind to me than going out there in a in a eight where you just do nothing with Jinder Mahal. And I like Jinder Mahal, but <laughs> um WWE doesn't do pro wrestling, even though at the end of the WrestleMania broadcast, you got, I can't remember if it was Michael Cole or Pat McAfee, you got someone yelling, I love professional wrestling and making sure to actually say it on WWE TV for the first time in 30 years or whatever. Uh, but that's not what they do. Uh, I'm glad Osprey chose to go somewhere where he could spend more time with his family, but also have some of the best pro wrestling matches you will ever see. Uh, so it was just, it was real nice to, to hear him push back on Triple H's bullshit. And he said this many times about many people over the years. Well, they just didn't really have what it takes to make it here in the big leagues. As if your efforts mean fuck all to your success in <laughs> WWE. It doesn't yeah, matter. And, and Jamie, they don't do the traveling road show that they used to be. They're not traveling 300 days out of the year anymore, right? They don't do all no, the house still, shows. They still are. No, they're still doing house shows. It's not not, as not many. like they used to do, though. I mean, no, they no, they do. didn't do like one every night. It's more, it's spread out like t uh, two a week and then uh, one on the weekend. Right. You know, and I know that because I see WWE talent that basically is on YouTube and Twitch, right? They're back mm -hmm. home part of the week. You know, that didn't happen for years, right? Yeah. You were on WWE, you were on the road for like five months solid. And then you might have get like a week off. And then you're back on the road until you get hurt, right? Whatever. <laughs> I'm just I, glad he's in AEW and he's wrestling the American Dragon at Dynasty. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for that match. Oh, that no. match is 100% stealing the show because the show, I mean, I know Swerve's going to have his moment. We all know Swerve's going to have his moment. But this match this match is is, is going to be a moment. It's going to be a moment. It's not going to be a match. It's going to be a chef's kiss. Now, speaking of a match that was a moment, let's talk about the next match, Jamie. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, we had Shane Taylor promotions, which, hey, that's awesome. So, of course, that's Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and Anthony Agogo going up against lion hook and shibata why shibata roped in this why why <laughs> why what's the end game here what what talent is chris jericho dragging down at destiny or dynasty uh i bet it's gonna be him and hook one more time and then hopefully 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 it's a um, if Hook beats him, he retires. Please, God. For all Please. of us, because he's getting booed so hard every time he comes in. Now, people are sick and tired. No way. And Charleston, West Virginia is not the epicenter of wrestling in America. And they were just like, no, this ain't it. This is not it. <laughs> it's the first West Virginia show that didn't have uh, Hanger on. I know. I know. Well, Hanger's taking a little break right now. This this was this was pointless, and this whole story's pointless, and they're speed running this pointless story, which I want to be thankful for, but also it's just bad TV. It was like two weeks ago he wrestled Hook, then he was like, "I got a proposition for you. Can I be your mentor?" And like the first opportunity he gets to be his mentor, he just pulls him off the apron and lets Shibata get choked out or beat up. That's right, he took the punch from Shane Taylor. Chris Jericho is now bringing down multiple talents at the same time, and it needs to stop. <laughs> he's he is a he's he out of control. A, he 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 is a, a, an indomitable black hole inside of the ring. He doesn't even have this cool music that people can sing along anymore. He's got well, I mean his music is cool. It's his old, but it's not the sing along music yeah. anymore. It's at least if nothing else, Jericho's whatever you could sing along to his entrance, and that's fun to do in the arena, right? Can't even do that shit anymore. Who cares? This made Hook look like a total dipshit, too, because, like, 
You even said last week, Mm -hmm. but Chris, I know who you are. So, like, clearly you're aware aware that he's probably going to turn on you at some point. Your first match, he just pulls you off the apron. Why not just start kicking his ass there? Clearly he is not (laughs) trying to actually mentor you. Now you just kind of look like an idiot. Good job, Hook. The thing is, we're we're, going to get this match booked literally the night before, right? It's going to be the collision before is when it's going to get booked. We all know this, right? Who cares? Uh, right. Can we move? Let's move on, Jamie, please. I, please, for all of us. Because, damn, I'm done. I mean, I, it is kind of fun having a weekly shit on Chris Jericho like that, we, <laughs> that we've had for the past, like, six weeks. I don't want but, to you know, it's just oh, kind of getting Jericho. stale even for us. Yeah, it's, yeah it's it's dead I don't want now. shit on Jericho. He's done so much good for this business, right? But has he? Lately, well, he hasn't. I mean, he has. Not for the as business, a, as but the, he's... Historically, for sure. That we've seen. All right. right. So speaking of actual good wrestlers, we had the Rainmaker Okada going up against Cristiano Argento. Um, yeah, that didn't last very long. Um, <laughs> you, you need to Okada say his, you won. Need, you need to say his, his passport name, Jamie. What is wrong with? Oh you? God. Okay. The Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. Thank you. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't get fined by the bucks, dude. Come on. Yeah, they might have video of us. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> might have a video of me verbally assaulting uh, JD Drake. Um, I wish that video. Existed. I don't know why I didn't record that when that was happening. That was so. It was, good. It was great. It was, so it was really fun. All right, but the the good thing out of this, guys, the good thing that came out of this was after the match, Okada calls out Pac uh, and accepts his challenge for the match at Dynasty. Pac, of course, comes out to a nice pop, which I was very happy about. And then the Bucks attack him. Then FTR comes out. They get attacked. You know, all these Dynasty people. So clearly there's going to be a six-man tag coming up in the very near future. Either Collision, uh, Dynamite. I didn't see when it got announced, but it's coming if it hasn't already been announced. (laughs) I'm good with that. Like that's that's a fun sh- match to do on your build up to Dynasty. That would have been that would have been good to do tonight. Uh, that's, good. that's a good that's a good go home show match. Right? Yeah, and, and like, I feel like tonight as a whole, yeah. it kind of felt like they they kind of mistimed their builds and just had an extra week to kill before the go home. So they just kind of threw what they could out there. It almost felt, and let me know what you guys, this is just a theory. This is, there's no weight to this whatsoever. It almost felt like, hey, the world's wrestled out because there was so much that happened in the past seven days. Let's not go too hard. So what it kind of felt, at least in my, my eyes. Yeah, that's fair. Like, you just, you didn't get that just absolute banger of a match we've come to expect from dynamite every week. Right. And it was unfortunately because a lot of eyes are on the wrestling world right now, it was a bad week not to give us that. Yeah. That's a good point. You should be on your A game. Maybe, maybe they should just had uh, swerve and Samoa Joe out there for like 30 to 55 minutes just talking <laughs> back and forth to each other. Clearly, that's what the big dogs do. Um, all right, so after that, you had the Bang Bang Gang uh, talking about you know their recent run and all that, and how they beat up Billy Gunn, and you know, and here's here's Jay White and all thirty six and a half abs that he has, uh, calling out anybody he wants. Like fa- he'll face anybody, so he's gonna face off against none other than Matt Sydal. That'll be fun. Yeah. I think we know how that, I think we all know how this is going to end, but hey, what else? Um, but what'd you guys think about the Thunder Rosa, Tony Storm segment? It happened. It was a segment. It I just, mean, they're trying to build, but I don't think that it needs any. Cause I think well, everybody I don't wants think to see any of the match. matches they have need to build, right? What They've did already this built do them. for anybody? Like look, look at the card like, they have. You got you got Osprey versus Danielson. There's no build needed. You just say those words and yes, please. Right? Yeah. Should even yeah. the match they announced tonight, right? You know, Pac Okada. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right? You got the you got the, the six man tag, right? 
okay, you can do some build on this. You can do some fun stuff with that ahead of time. Cool, right? You know, you got Julia versus Willow. Uh, that's pretty much already there. That's the, the women's world championship match. You told us, oh yeah, Thunder Rosa. She never lost her title. She's going against the girl woman who got it after her. Okay, that's yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> so explain that though. So I mean, that's well. So now I think I think this match does need some build. Um, but you don't have to build the half of the match that's already super over. You need to build <laughs> Thunder Rosa. And having her walk out there into a clear setup from your heel champion and then immediately get blasted for it and then just kind of lay in there, help us, and then get mad at the girl who came out to help. Like, what did this make? What did this did nothing to get you behind Thunder Rosa as a challenger? And that's kind of the problem they've had with Tony's championship reign so far is that they're having a hard time building up somebody you're interested in seeing potentially beat Tony for the title. That's fair. Jamie, stop me if this sounds like a reoccurring theme here because I mean, Jade Cargill, Britt Baker's long run, Tony Storm. It's lather, rinse, repeat, right? that same answer Austin gave you're not wrong I have nothing I legit have nothing for that <laughs> I did I did like I did like the uh the the, the miss sensor on the f-bomb by uh uh Deanna Perrazzo though oh uh, yeah whoops <laughs> give Deanna a little edge honestly she's not good on the mic so give her a little edge make her kind of this sparky italian you know new jersey you know cool do that right that's a better persona to sell we'll see we'll see what happens so what did you gentlemen think about anna jay versus mariah may i thoroughly enjoy this match i love mariah may and this is probably the best that anna jay has looked in a hot minute anna jay has been steadily steadily improving not rapidly but steadily improving okay steadily. I think I think it's much better performance out of her. Mariah May is hot right now. Good to capitalize on that. I think it's good because they did give us for the one women's match something that, would, that yes, this was on a while back, right? I think it might have been on Collision one night or something like that, right? But something a little different. It's not just Sky Blue out there with her butt every week, right? Cool. Something different. I Sky thought it was a good match, you. too. I liked it. Yeah, it was like the the match was fun. Um, the fallout was confusing. <laughs> okay, I liked it though because I have I have a theory. Like here okay. comes Mark Stradamus. All right. So first off, unhinged Anna J might be a good thing. Absolutely. Okay, I think Fair. I think that would do great wonders for her. She just becomes unhinged and just absolutely loses it and just becomes like this crazy wrecking machine um but the whole stardom thing i really enjoyed that for the fact that tony didn't save her so her old best friend mina uh shirakawa comes out which i love mina by the way yeah um oh, sure. comes out makes a save like damn near gives her tongue and <laughs> um you know we're setting now we're starting to set up that level of well Tony didn't come make the save, but my old friend made the save. Maybe we start to get that dissension line in order to get Mariah May that title shot to separate them. And then she takes it just like the old Mickey James. Okay. Yeah. Like that's, that's not a bad way to go from it, but that didn't, even if that ends up being the story that didn't make what happened after the match tonight make a lot of like you have Anna J who was the baby face lose the heel. And I get uh maybe Anna J getting a harder edge, maybe turning heel a little bit, something different, new and exciting for her. Cool. I get her jumping Mariah May afterwards, but then you, you had someone do a run in to save the bad guy um from the other now, maybe bad guy. And <laughs> Like it was a very like baby face style save, just like the slide, run him off and help your friend. And like it, 
it left too many questions of just like what the hell is going on right now it makes even less of, sense if you bring in roh because see they were tagged together on supercard yeah. of honor and they were the baby like, pieces on supercard so you had the pieces for something there but you've got to make them fit and you got to like tell us some kind of coherent story or start telling us coherent story that's going to go forward um because this was just like a thing that happened kind of like the the Tony Storm Thunder Rosa segment. Well, and uh, yeah, and Jamie, that's my problem. I think it's my only problem with the Mia Sharkow thing was that nobody knew what it was unless you knew what it was, right? Which I right? knew what it was. You knew what it was. Yeah, are we supposed to like her or, or not? No, yeah, <laughs> like to love her. She's a little party girl. That's her whole thing. She's a big party girl. Oh, no, I just mean like from from what we saw tonight, because yeah. most of the AEW audience is not familiar. What are we supposed to think of her? Um, she's a good kisser. Yeah. She comes out. She's a little awkward. Does a kiss on uh, another woman on national TV. You had 20 seconds of uh, Excalibur. Try to explain who she was to the people who don't know. And that and that's just my point. It's just like, if you know, you know. But if you don't know, how are you supposed to know? Because you didn't set it yeah, up. She, you just threw she's it She's a bit there. of a deep cut. Like... It's not like a Will Ospreay, which you should know. This is just, you you might not know who that is, and a little extra context would have helped here. Yeah, and she, like, I love, like, M Mina's, I, I, I do like her. I think she's a good wrestler, but she's not one of the top performers over in Sardom. Um, I mean, Julia was, but now Julia's officially signed by WWE, FYI, so that there's a good chance that she's going to show up on NXT on smart, Tuesday. Smart thing. In NXT. He must have been willing to go through the grind. Yeah, must have been. <laughs> well, she's Let's got that dog commitments in over in Japan, so she's not going to be starting over there for like another six weeks. So whatever. <laughs> uh, no, Rossi left without her. Confirmed. What? Rossi Agawa came with her because, like, she's good with Rossi. Julia stayed in the U.S. Well, she might be trained, but she's booked on their May Fourth show. Yeah. So she's doing the things that are allow her to do it, just like how they allowed um, yeah. blood sport for Shayna Baszler. All right. So she's getting acclimated, but she's not, they probably won't fully embrace you know, TV. Anyway, regardless. We're, we're, yeah. We're yeah. Not, but yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're going off, off line. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Like if they've got one of the, the more, the top line stardom girls, you know, they, that might've been better. Like starlight kid, um, Shuri, you know, Thecla, Thecla, uh, you know, Thecla any of one, them where people yeah, are like, Oh, I've heard that name, name, you know, but like, yeah, to your point, like if you don't know about stardom, you're like, who is this person? And yeah. Why is she kissing her? And I hate to say it. If they don't know who it is, you're just like, Oh, it's a Japanese female wrestler. <laughs> Joshi. You know, Cause I know that word now. Cause it's I watch it. I don't know which one it is, but it's somebody, you know, so anyway, but it was cool to see, you know, for those who did Point. know. So I did. I like that the I like the least that there is stardom. Her entrance graphics had stardom on it, right? Play on that. Like let's really try and amp this relationship up. Please, God. Yeah. And he fumbled that back hard. Oh. Triple H when he got Soraya. Yeah. Oh. He oh so hard. So hard. He was so good. Fumbled it. So there was a Mercedes Monet interview promo afterwards. Okay. Yes. And sit down interview, record things. So it wasn't as live. So I thought, of, personally, I don't know what you thought, Austin. I thought it was better than her live promo. Okay. Still didn't say much, but then there was a blackout and she gets jumped mysteriously by somebody. Are they telegraphing what's going to happen in the TBS title match at uh, Dynasty? I don't know what they're telegraphing, uh, <laughs> but I wish they wouldn't have telegraphed it by having Mercedes Monet talk into a camera because, like, not a skill she has. Uh, yeah, yeah. The 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 biggest thing I got from that promo is I don't think she actually watches AEW. <laughs> like, she she. I once heard someone. I once heard someone explain that. Donald Trump always sounds like a kid that's doing a book report on a book he doesn't read, <laughs> never read. Like it's very general and you get some names right, but there's no depth to it because you clearly don't know what you're talking about. 
That was her. Like, first of all, uh, I'm going after the the TBS women's title because Julia and Willow are 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 the two best women in AEW right now. Um, nothing about the history of this show is informs that statement at all. <laughs> um, if you want to be generous, you could say that's her opinion. Uh, but then she starts talking about her history with Willow and like all she could say about Julia is that Julia is kind of mysterious and like it was a very vague just like I think Julia is the blonde girl I'll just kind of say that's what a, I remember that's about creepy, her uh, white goth chick right yeah I know her yeah. but then when she started talking about her history with Willow she's like and I lost that title shot and I got hurt but that wasn't the worst part Cause I lost my opportunity at that time. Like, no, you just repeated the same thing you just said, just like slightly different words. This was a recorded interview too, guys. They could have done multiple takes. <laughs> uh, this, this was bad. This was just bad talking, not even bad promo. This was bad. Just speaking as a human being. And please just turn her heel and put her with Stokely already. Like, Stokely and her would be so entertaining um, because her talking just isn't. And yeah, the her getting jumped at the end is, is kind of cool. But like. We we're, we're pretty sure Willow's going over and then it, because she announced that was the one good thing. She announced her in ring debut is going to be at double or nothing. Uh, and she's going to challenge the TBS title, which, OK, um, but also. Just last week, they re-updated the rankings, and you haven't wrestled <laughs> anyone yet. Why are you getting a TBS title opportunity? Has Anna J not been out there working every three to four weeks for that shot? Uh, what's Ruby Soho doing? Like, hey, Ruby. It's, See, he just set you up. That was awesome. <laughs> it's just more of them. It's just more of them mailing in the the women's stories, and I wish they would just like put a little more effort in that direction. That's fair. I'm with but you. But I do I, agree. It feels like it's telegraphed. Feels telegraphed. I feel like Mercedes just... I agree with everything you guys have said about her as far as heel face, right? 100%. Agree with you both on that. I feel like she's just still kind of out of it, right? She hasn't wrestled in how long? She's been on the sidelines for a while. She hasn't been in front of a TV either, right? The wrestling in New, in New, like in Stardom New Japan, very different the way that they do the facing stuff, right? You know, they don't have like the live promos in the same manner and all that stuff, right? So it's very it's a very kind of different setup, you know. I think she's just rusty as hell, but she's also not in the right suit, and I think. I don't mind because I know in my heart of hearts they're going to turn her heel. I think it's perfect to have her turn heel when she faces Willow and Stokely's a part of that because he can dump on Willow. That gives Willow the, the push. That gives her the big pop, right? Because she's the one that got abandoned by the manager and got the, 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 new, the new hot chick, the new top chick, you know, is the one. So that gives her something to – go after right to so give her a good story it's win-win for everybody right until then yeah we got to stay with her trying to like relearn how to do this whole wrestling promotion thing so i don't i don't know if you can necessarily chalk it up to being rusty she spent like a decade in the wwe machine uh i could see if she had a tune-up match or two it was a little rusty in the ring specifically but like you are a high dollar free agent for your ability to do this. Yeah. Um, touche. Do this better. She I think also spent the, a decade in the, in the WWE. And you tell me when she was face and she was actually talking. Not when she was face and, and teamed up with Bailey or anybody else who did the talking for her. Yeah. But like also, you could just not have her talk. Like, that's, that's what I'm saying. Don't have her give talk. Give her a mouthy. My 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 biggest concern is that I think they are counting too hard on support from the audience for her just because she's a big name, a big deal. That is pretty thin. Um, she's not an Osprey or an Okada, like just world class, absolute best. And you are super hype. People were super hype for her coming in. 
But I think the crowd's going to lose interest outside of getting to chant CEO during her entrance, which is a, a cool thing. Um, I think if you don't do interesting things with her, though, I think the crowd's going to lose interest pretty quick. Jamie, she's in the re the wrestling wrestling company, and she's not wrestling. Yeah, yeah, why? Why? That's the whole thing. And like, rumors are circulating that she still wasn't healthy. And I can understand that. Okay, cool. But then there's also like they have video of her training recently, so it's like, like, come on, like get a little physical. Like you got a little physical when you first showed up. Why? Why are you waiting in 60 more days to wrestle? That's the I thing mean, that really gets under my skin. You can't put her in a, in a, in a six woman tag or a tag match or, or well, something. She needs friends. And right now she ain't got uh, any. <laughs> she's, just, she's just the CEO. But make her a heel and have her a little stable. Yeah. Get her Rebel. Put her. <laughs> Bring do back exactly Rebel. what you're doing with Adam Cole, but do it with her. That'd be yeah. probably better right now because like I'm there's there's so many things you could do that aren't this because this is just not entertaining anybody. No, I am I am not entertained. Yeah, this not regular not entertained, not sports entertained, not any kind. No, zero zilch. So hopefully we get and again. We talk about this. You made mention about Britt Baker, how you want to see Britt Baker back, right? Jamie Hayter eventually is going to be back, right? But you also, you brought in Deanna Perrazzo. You gave her a fizzle of a run, and then it, you got Mercedes Monet, who might wrestle before the summer. Who knows, right? Who knows at this point, dude? What are we doing, like, what are we doing here? With, come on, Tony. Come on. Be better, damn it. Be better. <laughs> that should be the new theme of our show, because I think we said that more than any. We probably said that as much as our regular catchphrases, Jamie. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right, guys. Any final thoughts on WrestleMania weekend, uh, everything around it? Uh, Dynamite, which was mm, okay. Anything else? I'm any thoughts? Okay. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Thank God for our truth is my Thank, big takeaway. Yeah. From the, like, what an absolute treasure. I mean, you know, if, if his parents didn't let him sit there on Saturday mornings and watch John Cena on his television set, 17 inch color, cape, rapid ears, cable television set, I don't know where we'd be today with wrestling. So. I know where we're going to be next week, though. Same bad time, same bad channel. Come join us. It is the, hopefully this is just, again, a swing and a miss. You know, like I said, there's been a lot of wrestling. Maybe it's a little oversaturation. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but next week, uh, I think we're going to get back to some normalcy with everything else around it. So hopefully that means the same normalcy with Dynamite, meaning some banger matches. It is their go-home show. That belt, which uh, Austin is still uh, finagling, but Jamie has uh, uh, rightfully won, uh, will be on the line again in two weeks. So join us. We'll preview uh, a Dynasty for you guys. Uh, and definitely, if it's your first time here, please hit that like and subscribe buttons down below. We'd love to see you back. Come join us live if you're listening to us. We're live every Wednesday here on YouTube. You can hop in the live chat. Uh, just don't anger our moderator, Heather. She has a, a very, very large band hammer that she will be more than happy to use. No, I, I have no idea how large it is. But, no, please join us for uh, live chat. And uh, if not, you can always hit us up on Twitter, at Total Spot Fest. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you guys giving us some of your time. Jamie, take us home. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not down with Total Spot Fest, I got five words for you. Oh, again. Okay. Yeah. The champ is back here. Oh, back here. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. Later.